I already know what all seven of you that watch my YouTube videos all the way to the end are thinking. Josh, two videos in one week? <laughs> wow, you're on a roll. <sighs> yes, yes I am. Well, unless this video doesn't come out this week, then, then I'll feel like a fool, but it's not gonna happen. It's coming out this week. I've never made myself look like a fool on social media, ever. Not counting TikTok. So this is gonna be a how-to video on how to install a mega size chrome heavy duty train horn from Grand General. Now, before the comment section gets filled up like all my YouTube videos with tens of thousands of comments, or two or three, saying, this is not a real train horn, Josh. I already know it's not a real train horn. I did not go out to the rail yard and steal a rail train horn, okay? But as far as the train horns go that you can buy in like a chrome shop, this one's my favorite for the price. It, it has a nice deep low tone. Now we're gonna be pairing that with the United Pacific valve. I'll be the first to say if I was buying it, I would not be buying this valve. I would go with the Grand General. There's reasons why I don't like this valve and I will explain here in a few minutes into the video. If you stick around that long, um, I would prefer to buy the Grand General one. It's, it's just a better valve. I do not like this one, but we won this whole kit here for entering a truck into a truck show. So that's why I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be putting this one on. Um, let's just get right into it. Let's, let's do an unboxing. All right, let's um, show you what you will get in your Grand General train horn box if you decide to buy one like this. Wow. We got some nice trumpets here. It's a three banger. This thing right here is trash. Don't even hook that up. Um, this is a how-to video. I don't need to learn how to install these, so I'm teaching you guys. We don't need that either. And flies off of your air tank, and you lose all air, and your brakes lock up going 85 down the highway. It wasn't because of me. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be doing what I'm showing you how to do here. We'll need all of this hardware. Depending on where I mount it, I might need longer bolts. Usually this works just fine. That's that. Moving on to the valve. Okay, so let's talk about it right now, why I don't like this valve. This is the reason right here. The Grand General valve already comes pre-tightened here. These um, 90s or whatever you call these are pre-tightened right to where it needs to be to slide down in there. The United Pacific valve though comes loose. This is how they ship it. And these are like the cheapest, the cheapest fittings you will ever come across in the world. They are so loose. Look at this. This is threaded in probably two or three times. And I mean, it's just wiggling all over the place. All right. The cheapest. So to keep it from not leaking, you got to glob this thing full of very he high, heavy duty, thick Teflon, usually like gas grade. I'll use like the gray or the yellow. And you only put it on one side, the side that's going to have constant air. And the other side, you just put a little bit on because it's not going to have constant air. The only time it has air is when you open the valve to blow air through to the horn. So what you're going to do is you're going to glob it up on one side. You're going to tighten that down to where it's tight. And then you're going to have to thread this side out to where it's not even tight to fit into the base. It's just, it's a bad, it's moving on. I thought I'd take the time also and tell you that you can get these in two different heights. You can get the, um, the above average height. This one is about, about nine inches of height. 
this one here, nobody uses, nobody really likes this one because if you have a low rider seat, if your seat is a low base or something, you're, end, you're gonna end up hitting the side of your leg on this at some point, which I'll show you after we have it mounted. We don't use these, this is a used one that I just had sitting here, I thought I'd show you guys. But if you're a person that sits in a very tall seat, this would be the route you'd wanna take. Um, we don't like these ones. You could always cut this down if this was the only option because um, Lord knows we cannot get any parts anymore due to COVID. Am I allowed to say that on here? We're not, moving on to the next section. What I'm saying is you could cut the tall one down to height. That's what you could do. If that's all you got and you want a short one, the Chrome shop can't get you a short one, get the tall one, cut it down shorter. You can custom fabricate your valve if that's something you look, want to do. Oh, hi there, friends. Do you like my valve? So this is where we're gonna mount it, is about right here. The way I like to fit these up is I like to sit in the seat. You gotta shut the door to make sure you can get your hand down in between the door pouch and the valve, so that way you can rip this thing. <laughs> something like that. Um, and you want to make sure you're not going to hit your handle back here. So I like where this is at. It's not hitting the seat. Wow, that was some squeaking action back there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and mark that, and we're going to drill holes for the half-inch hose. We're going to be running half-inch line for the valve right now. Like, right now. So first thing we need to do is we need to find the fittings that I'm going to need for the job. And in a perfect world, I would remember to order the fittings as I use them up. Um, this world is not perfect and I do not have a good memory. So I figured out something that's gonna work. We're gonna use this one here. It is a half inch, but I believe that's, it's a size um, for the train horn. And then this is gonna go into the air tank for our supply line. So let's go put this one in first. We're gonna start at the air tank, go to the valve, then from the valve to the train horn or vice versa, depending on however I feel like doing it. Just... So we're looking at the back side of the driver's side air tank. You're gonna wanna make sure your air is drained. Otherwise this job gets a lot more fun. We're gonna pull this plug out right here. We're gonna be using just a little bit of liquid Teflon. I know this one already has Teflon on it, but I, I, I prefer to over Teflon things. I'm gonna do it the way I like to, is what I'm saying. I'm put some on this one. Oh, more than enough, oh boy. Oh, this stuff is hot and runny. We're gonna go ahead and install that. It's the wrong size. Before we go any further, I'd like to address an issue I'm running into on TikTok. Everybody keeps calling me a YouTube mechanic, saying I have to watch a YouTube video before I even do a how-to video. This is simply not true. Chris Fix does not have a video of him putting a set of train horns on a turd box Miata. Trust me, I checked. Therefore, I am doing this on my own. I just had to get that off my chest. We are now going to mark the holes and drill the holes for the half inch airline to come up through. There's many different ways to mark this. You could use a longer drill bit and just drill straight down through the pipe where it sits and not remove it again. You could stick a marker in there, but since this is carpet, you probably won't be able to get a marker to show up quite as well. So what we're going to do on this one, is just hit it with a touch of paint. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and drill down through there now. So we're figuring out where we're going to mount our train horns. Now, a lot of guys, and we've done it many of times, have mounted them on the front side of the battery box up there on the passenger side. But what happens is you end up running over something and your steer tire kicks it up and it destroys your trumpets. So we're not going to mount this up there. Where I prefer to mount them is like hanging them off 
of a cross member, something like that. That's how I prefer to do them. But on this truck, we have tons of side boxes. So this one works out just perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this right to the back side of it. Right like that. It's gonna be beautiful, guys. Beautiful. Let's get it mounted. And now we're gonna drill them with a 5 16th drill bit. I hope nothing was inside. There's our holes. I'm gonna try and attempt to do this one handed. Wow. Did I tell you guys you're gonna be able to do this on your own, by yourself? I'm doing this by myself. You guys can too. With these three simple steps that I'm showing you. We're on step 17, if you haven't been counting. should hold those in place. Oh my gosh, it's hot in here. I'm gonna apologize in advance if all you guys can hear is fan and air swooshing sounds, but it is way too freaking hot in Missouri right now. Let's get back to it, guys. And now we're gonna never seize the bolts. That's not going anywhere, guys. So we're just gonna install this fitting right here. I believe this is quarter inch to half inch. Quarter inch pipe to half inch um, quick connect for the airline. Oh my gosh, there's no room. Stop it. Get some help. Perfect. Then you're gonna to wanna to pop your hose up through the hole. So we have our half inch coming from the air tank as our supply and our half inch running back to the train horn, which we just hooked up. So let's go ahead and hook these up to the valve. So we're gonna slide our base over the hose. We're gonna square it up to where we like it because there is quite a bit of um, sloppage here. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to square it up where it belongs. Now, this is not the best method. Heck, this isn't even the second best method, but this is the method we are gonna use to fasten this down. We're using some pan head self-tapping screws. All right. That's not going any. Moving on to phase four. We're gonna completely disassemble the valve. Now that the valve is fully disassembled, we need to disassemble it more. The fittings need to come out the bottom side and you got a Teflon on them. I don't know where the manufacturer gets off making me do this much work to make their item work. We're gonna be using some gray Teflon tape. 
Isn't it a lovely day, guys? It's just beautiful. Got that one started. Gonna be doing the same to this one. You guys get to completely watch me disassemble and reassemble a highly... I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about the wrenches I forgot to grab for this segment of video. Well, I guess I should start that one too since I started the other one. I can't do one one way and one another way. You guys are really going to think I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to say this is the um, side that is the supply side. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give this thing just a little bit of tough on, not much. That'll do her. When you know you have enough Teflon is when you basically shut the hole off like that. I'm just kidding. We're going to get rid of that. Don't worry. Oh my gosh. There's somebody right now having a heart attack. The supply is on the back side this round. Sometimes I put it on the front side. It doesn't really matter. It's just a ball, ball valve, guys. Here, I'll let you guys see. See? Ball valve. Say it with me. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this one on here. Gonna crank her down. This one, we're not going to get another turn out of that. Yeah. Oh, I messed up. I need to get some wrenches. All right, we're back with everything we should ever need to finish this job. So we're going to take this off. And this off and that out before we drop it on the floor and it rolls under the truck we're going to tighten these fittings down since this isn't the um supply side we're not going to make it too overly tight so i don't end up damaging this chrome plate at fitting that's more than enough You could put a little bit of tape on the next size up, like get a wrench that's a little bit bigger and put some tape in there to keep yourself from damaging the fitting, but I'm really not damaging it, guys, so stop stressing out so much. This side, I don't have to use a wrench, though, because I have a little bit more leverage. Cheap brass? Mm. Okay. Very good. Put a little more Teflon on this side. Now this is a side that you want to put more than enough on. Because we're only going to thread it on a couple turns. Check it out. One turn. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. There's no way I can get another turn out of that. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I don't like this setup. If I go another turn to make this tighter so it ain't, you know, that loose, I'll pull, I'll effectively have pulled the fittings together so tight that it will no longer fit the base. And I need this side to be tight to where it won't leak my air out and I lose brakes. By the way, don't do anything that I'm doing here because if your line flies off of your air tank and you lose all air and your brakes lock up doing 85 down the highway, it wasn't because of me. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing what I'm showing you how to do here. All right? So we're going to call this good. We're going to push these hoses back up through my air lines back up through here connect the airlines and finish this job all right so now we're going to move on to the next problem we're going to slide these on here one two now i'm not one to complain 
about parts, but these ferrules that they give you from China, I'm assuming, is made for China half inch airline, not American half inch airline. See, the hose over in China must be a little bit thinner, a little skinnier, because our American hose do not fit inside of this ferrule. Now, I have done it before where I have heated this thing up to where it is about to melt, and I slid it over just to prove a point to somebody. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna throw away that one, and we're gonna put on our own ferrules. Oh my gosh, the, our ferrules don't fit either. We're gonna put our own ferrules on. The inserts fit just fine. I, I don't understand. I guess the American hose are just built a little thicker, a little bit more durable. All right, now that those are on, we're gonna go ahead So now we're gonna go ahead and air the system up and we're gonna check for air leaks. <laughs> All right, be honest. How many of you guys thought I forgot about, forgot about the main supply line here, huh? Huh? Ooh, that was my finger. Perfect. Get a little tug to make sure it locks in. All right. We're good to go, guys. All right, while she's airing up, I'm gonna go ahead and get all my tools out of there, and then um, we'll vacuum the floor out. Give it a couple test blows. I think it's gonna sound good, guys. Now for the actual moment of truth. Hey, no bubbles. <laughs> I never doubt it myself, guys. Let's go ahead and pound this down into place with a 12 pound sledgehammer and give our first test blow. Don't blow it. Stop it. Get some help. Now, I'm sure there's going to be some people that say, well, if you're going to blow a train horn, it's just fine running a small line back there and having it on a solenoid switch that it comes with. Um, I just thought I would, you know, further clarify why we like the valve. It's more fun. And you can go on it slowly like I just demonstrated, and you can go on it and keep it halfway quiet. You can actually control it. Like, you can hear 
when each trumpet starts to blow. Like if you just send enough air through, only one trumpet's gonna be blowing. Or that's at least what it sounds like because you can hear them like change pitch three different times and then it's like too loud. And that's another thing. When you run half inch airlines, you're delivering air, a bigger volume of it, a lot faster. So you can really, really blow these trumpets. Um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If it helped you install or come to a decision on your train horns, what you want to do, awesome. Leave a thumbs up, follow, or subscribe. Um, yeah, I got to run over. I got to fix some AC. I got to fix a driver's AC. Apparently, you can't drive these days without AC in your truck. <laughs> wow. This has been fun. I'll catch you guys in like three more months when I decide to post YouTube videos.